Hello, hello. Oh, it's not starting soon. It's starting now. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Welcome to the Brownie Workshop. I'm so sorry that this is late. I apologize. I will uh, uh, post in the Discord as well. I uh, had a little bit of internet connectivity issues. So I know um, uh, we're very late here, <laughs> but uh, we can get jumped into this. We can start learning about Brownie. And we got a whole bunch of cool workshops for the rest of the day, actually. Uh, today, right now, we have uh, Intro to Brownie. Then we, right after that, we have Intro to Foundry. Uh, we also have our team building events today. So um, let's just jump right into it. So I apologize for my tardiness here, um, but let's jump in. Let's learn. Let's learn about Brownie. So we're going to switch back over to our code already here. Oh, that's not my code. That's not it either. This is it. Here we go. All right, cool. Um, I'm unmuted. Someone says I'm muted. Can you, can you all hear me? All right, great. So uh, for those of you who do not know, Brownie is a um, is a smart contract development framework like Hardhat, uh, like a lot of these tools that we've seen before. And it's Pythonic, and that's its major difference. So with Brownie, and then actually, let me just, let me actually show you the documents as well. With Brownie, uh, we can write all of our Solidity, we can write all of our Viper, we can write pretty much everything that we want, um, but have a Pythonic tooling around it, which for those of you who like Python, it makes life a lot easier. So if we go over to the Brownie docs, we can see everything about it in here. Um, and if you go to, Or maybe not DeFi Llama is not the best, but if you go to DeFi Llama, you can see different protocols like Curve.Finance, uh, which is a multi-billion dollar protocol, use Brownie as one of their main uh, tooling. So once we install Brownie, and uh, for, for working with Brownie, usually I tell people installing Brownie is kind of the hardest part, um, especially because there are a few different ways to do it. My favorite way to install it is using this thing called PipX. So PipX is a Pythonic package installer, but it installs everything inside of kind of its own like contained Python virtual environment. Um, so if you're looking to install Brownie, I highly recommend using PipX uh, and using this line right here. So make sure you install PipX first and then do PipX install F Brownie. And then once you have it, you can do uh, any dash dash help. And then you'll get an output that looks something like this with all the Brownie commands. Cool. So once we have Brownie set up, we can do, uh, let's actually make a new Brownie folder. I'll call it N22 hack. Nap. In our code editor. Then we can do Brownie init. And we get something that looks like this. So when we do Brownie init here, we have our build, um, contracts, interface. We all these have all these folders in here. But the main ones that we want to focus on are contracts, interfaces, scripts, um, excuse me, reports, scripts, and tests. So when we get started with Brownie, um, and in most of these frameworks, the first thing we're, that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a contract. So I'm going to create a contract. We're going to call it um, simple storage .sol. And We can start coding in here. So I'll do my classic pragma solidity 0 0.8.7, whatever we want to do, contract storage. And then maybe something like UN 256 public value uh, function set oh, let's turn that off set value u256 value or new value public value equals new value cool so now i got a real minimalistic contract in here and what i can do is run brownie compile and what this is going to do um it's going to run 
run into an issue. Bad project name. Project oh, project must start with an alphabetic character. Well, I didn't know that. We're gonna move. Right to hack to hackathon twenty twenty two. We're gonna do that instead. Actually, didn't know that about Brownie. It looks you learn something new every day. Now we're gonna run Brownie compile, and we're gonna get an output like this. And now, if we look in our build folder, we can see this simple storage.json bit. This is how we know that. Our contract has actually been compiled. We can see the ABI, we can see the bytecode, we can see all this stuff, all these compilation details about our simple storage contract. Cool. And then as we're uh, going along here today, um, and for any of these live workshops, be sure to use the comments, be sure to uh, ask comments. So if you have questions on any of this, um, go ahead, drop it into the drop it into the chat here. All right, cool. Um, so now we have something compiled. Yeah. Any, any questions on this so far? No questions, no thoughts, no comments. Everybody, everyone's got it. Who here is uh who here is new? Who here is new to Brownie? Who here is like uh is learning right now? No, no questions? I you want I can just keep going. You want me to you, you want me to keep going? No, no thoughts, comments, questions. All right, cool. We will uh we'll keep going then. Let me switch back. Oops. Uh, there we go. All right, cool. So once we have a contract, we can now actually start writing scripts and tests. So I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it um, deploy contract I. And this is where, or actually, that's not Pythonic. Ew. Deploy contract. Yep. And what we can do in here is we can write a script to deploy our simple server, uh, simple storage contract. So from the top, we'll do um, from Brownie import, and then we can import the name of our contract, which is simple storage. And whenever you have a uh, a script in Brownie, it needs to start with the main with a main function. We can even just have like a def main print high. We can run Brownie run scripts deploy contract at pi, and then we'll launch a little Ganache UI. We'll run that script, and then we'll run high. Boom. So, but we want to actually deploy this simple storage. So one of the first the uh, first things we need a Brownie is to get an account. So we're also going to import accounts from Brownie. And whenever we work with Brownie, uh, Brownie will give us some fake accounts if we're working on a local uh, blockchain. So what we can do is we can say my account equals uh, accounts of zero. So this will give us the, the first or the zero with fake account that Brownie gives us. And then we can do, um, we can say simple storage deployed equals simple storage dot deploy from my account. Whenever you make a transaction in Brownie, you always have to add this, this from section 
to say who the transaction is from. So we're going to say, okay, we're going to deploy simple storage. We're going to call from, all right, we're going to deploy it. And then we're going to deploy it from uh, this account, this fake account that we just got in here. Now we can say stored value equals simple storage deployed value. I think goes in the storage. We can call this public value. Uh, and then we can do a little print here. Print. F. We say current value is stored value. And then we can change the value. So we can say by making a, tra a transaction to actually update it. So we can say um, a transaction equals simple storage deployed dot what's it set value set value set it to 77 again we'll say from my account we'll do transaction dot wait one this is telling uh us that we're going to wait one block for this transaction to complete and then we can run this again Stored value equals simple storage dot deployed value. And if this went through correctly, this should be, this should now print out 77. Current value is stored value. So we can pop up our terminal again. Brownie run scripts. Play contract.py. And we do indeed see the current value is 77. We see up here, current value is zero. We see this output here saying a transaction is being sent. And then we see the current value is 77. Nice. And that's how we can actually deploy and uh, our smart contracts uh, through Brownie. Um, the only difference is if we wanted to deploy a smart contract uh, or interact with some type of like main network, it, all we would do then is add a dash dash at the end, network, and then, you know, say something like mainnet, um, gorilla, or whatever. You can see all of the networks that you have uh, in Brownie by running Brownie networks list. We can see um, I have a whole bunch of different stuff, you know, uh, that I've added, I've added like ZK Sync Testnet, DevGeth, um, and some other stuff. But Brownie comes built in with a lot of these, with Mainnet, Robston, Rinkby, Gorilla, Coven, um, with an inferior connection. You can update these uh, with the Brownie CLI with different um, uh, providers like QuickNode or, um, or or Alchemy. But these are all the ones that are kind of built in, um, and if you're if you want go to the chain link mix get up and i'll drop a link to this here if you want to learn more about kind of the different networks um and a more professional setup to use brownie definitely check out this this chain link mix um it's like it's already has kind of everything you need to get going um and start building it has different uh, Brownie networks. It has different little tips for adding different networks or connecting to different networks, um, and is really really helpful. So we have three minutes left here. Uh, we will answer some questions uh, in the last couple two minutes, and then we will uh, flip over to Foundry, which is next, which everyone should definitely uh, show up for. So uh, questions. We have our first question. Why wait for one block? Um, so the reason that we wait for one block is really just uh, kind of, it's kind of a brownie thing for local networks. If you don't wait for one block, it gets a little confused because what will happen is the script will end and it'll shut down the script, but like your Ganache CLI will still be like processing a transaction and it gets kind of weird. Um, so I always just recommend whenever you're building really anything, off chain, whenever you send a transaction, at least wait one uh, block confirmation before moving on and doing the next thing. And that'll just always ensure that um, whatever you wanted to have 
finished already is actually finished. So always wait one block. Great question. 77 uh, is hardcoded value. Can we pass a variable? Uh, yes, you could absolutely pass a variable. Yes. So if you did like um, my new val equals 77 and then pass my new val, yes, 100% could do that. Good question. Any other questions here? Again, apologies for my for my tardiness here. Okay, cool. All right, everybody. Well, uh, we'll see you in the Discord. We're going to flip over to the Foundry um, setup now, and uh, we'll see you there. Oh, uh, uh, last question. Was there uh, were there code suggestions from Copilot? Yes, that th that was code suggestions. Yes. Is there a way to check a testnet is deprecated in code? Um, not really. I mean, I guess you could send a transaction and see if it actually goes through. <laughs> um, but I, I don't think so. Not really. No questions yet. Just started the lottery lesson. Excellent. Excellent. All right, cool. We'll see you at the Foundry.